Welcome to Mom to Mom program, a new show about women, family, health, faith, and basically whatever we find interesting while we share the challenging, but at the end, the most rewarding experiences of being a mom. I would like now to welcome my two special friends that are here with me in Mom to Mom program that will be sharing the experiences with us. First of all, Rita Maidom Lapadon. Welcome to Mom to Mom program. Thank you for being here with us. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Now, Rita has two beautiful children, one son and one daughter, mm -hmm. who's 23 and a half and 22 years old. My second friend is Hazel Wanda Ginagil. Welcome to Mom to Mom program. Thank you for having me. Hazel has one son who's 14 years old. So now, uh, I would like to focus on the beginning journey mm -hmm. of pregnancy memories. Now we all remember when we first found out that we were pregnant. Yeah. I would like to just uh, take you back on that time and uh, ask either of you, how did you start preparing yourselves on the pregnancy journey? Rita? Um, once I discovered that I was pregnant, I started reading on how to make sure that I would have a good and healthy pregnancy. So reading was a lot to me. Mm -hmm. because there were a lot of things that I needed to know. Mm -hmm. So you read a Re lot read, about yeah. pregnancy. Yeah, like what, yes, I, what I should eat, mm -hmm. how I should take care of myself, mm -hmm. that kind of things. Okay, that, yeah. that is a good mm -hmm. beginning as you start to prepare yourself mm -hmm. in the pregnancy journey. Right. What about you, Hazel? Yeah, I did lots of reading as well mm -hmm. because being a first-time mom, you have no idea of what's happening. You don't know mm -hmm. what to expect True. and here you are, mm -hmm. you need to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So what do we need to do? The only way was to read and to continue reading. And to get more information That's right. on how to prepare ourselves right. mm -hmm. as mother. I agree. Now. Um, I would like to just ask you if you remember the first time when you knew you were pregnant, how did you feel or how did you react? Well, um, I think it was a pleasant surprise mm -hmm. um, because it has been a few years uh, after the marriage and so we, we didn't expect that the pregnancy was going to happen and so mm -hmm. when I when the you know the test kit says it's positive <laughs> just told my husband I think I'm pregnant <laughs> <laughs> and I think we, we, we both felt very excited at that time that's wonderful mm -hmm. it's always a joy to know especially to have the gift of life Amen. Mm -hmm. what about you Hazel yeah, I was, I was surprised. I didn't tell my husband until later. I wanted to find out for sure for myself first. <laughs> and he wasn't, um, he wasn't convinced. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, let's try another test kit. <laughs> <laughs> so we did. And we were both excited and we were, you know, overwhelmed with joy. That's wonderful. Now, when you found out that you were pregnant, did you experience any kind of weird cravings or any type of uh, symptoms with morning sickness or any reactions, mm -hmm. you know, that most women have during their pregnancies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think in, in my second and third month, um, I started having morning sickness and I threw up a lot. Oh my. Um, it was so bad. I couldn't smell any, anything, any cooking. Mm -hmm. Like, and I couldn't stand durian, you know. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> oh. um, if I smell anything, anybody cooking, oh, I would be throwing up, and I couldn't hold any food in my stomach for mm. for weeks. I would just eat like rice and water and some nuts. That's all I could eat without throwing up. Mm. That must be very hard. It, it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it was not forever. I know. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just during the beginning trimester. Um, I think about two or three months. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about you, Hazel? For me, um, I don't remember having cravings. Mm -hmm. My problem was I simply didn't want to eat. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I had to eat. Yeah. So um, I found a go-to food, <laughs> and that was bread. Oh, uh -huh. And my mom would make bread, and she would make more bread. <laughs> and um, I would have peanut butter and jam sandwich, peanut butter and jelly mm -hmm. for lunch, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that sustained me for a few months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't, I could hold food down, mm -hmm. but I just didn't want to eat anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you experience any type of sickness? As for me, mm -hmm. I had headaches. Mm -hmm. And my headaches were normally in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I'm a morning person mm -hmm. and I was very happy even during pregnancy I was able to maintain my mornings but in the afternoons I had horrible headaches. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to lie down and rest. Mm -hmm. I'm sure our body goes through a lot of changes mm -hmm. once we enter into the pregnancy journey, even for myself, I would have a, all, an all-day right. sickness. It's not just morning or afternoon or evening, but it seems like it's the whole day mm -hmm. type of uh, mm. sickness that I couldn't stand, but mm. thankfully it wasn't that long. Yes. And right. then pretty soon I can enjoy what we call the pregnancy uh, journey that many women experience. Mm. Now, um, during your pregnancy, uh, how did your husband support you, especially when you couldn't enter, like, you know, have food or you cannot, uh, like, function properly due to your headache? Mm -hmm. uh, how did your husband or family members support you mm -hmm. going through this uh, journey of, you know, physical and emotional changes during your pregnancy? Mm -hmm. Well, my husband was very supportive. Mm -hmm. um, we, were, were, we were in Singapore at that time, so there were no um, relative around, but mm -hmm. at least he was there and he tried his very best to um, provide the, the support that I needed. For instance, if he, is, he wouldn't ask me to cook, he would just go out and eat because mm. I couldn't cook True. during that time. <laughs> so um, I, appreci I, pr I really appreciated his understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the same. My husband was very supportive. Um, uh, you know, people would say, hey, you're pregnant, you need to eat this, you need to eat that. Mm -hmm. My husband said, just eat what you can eat. Mm -hmm. You know, and the people around me were also very supportive. My principal mm -hmm. said, if you don't feel well, just go to the sick room or the clinic and mm -hmm. take a rest. And that was so helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's always nice to have people who understand. That's yeah. right. And especially your loved ones, mm -hmm. family members, mm -hmm. and also at your workplace. That's yes. true. Right? Yes. Because pregnancy is not an easy journey. Mm -hmm. It is a fun and exciting journey, but sometimes during mm -hmm. the cycle of pregnancy, um, we women go through a lot. A lot. Yeah. And so we're thankful for those who understand mm -hmm. and support us. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you, Rita and Hazel, for joining us today and for sharing your experiences on pregnancy memories. Let's embrace every single stage of the process. Today in Women's Hacks, we'll share some useful women's hacks to do during pregnancy. Take notes.
pregnancy. At around the 28th week of pregnancy, babies can begin to smell the same smells as their mother. In fact, the ambiotic fluid enhances a baby's smell. A pregnant woman's heart can grow up to 12% to circulate extra blood for her baby. The rapid increase in estrogen levels during the first trimester may cause some of the nausea associated with pregnancy. On the other hand, it may cause hair growth in unwanted places, like your breasts, stomach, and face. An average uterus is about the size of a rambutan, but during pregnancy the uterus stretches to the size of a watermelon. The placenta nourishes and protects the baby. During pregnancy through the umbilical cord, the placenta will grow about 50 kilometers of blood vessels. Pregnant women can start to lactate when they hear a baby crying. The longest pregnancy recorded was a year and 10 days. Postnatal depression. Many women feel a bit down, tearful, or anxious in the first week after giving birth. This is often called the baby blues, and it is so common that it's considered normal. The baby blues don't last for more than two weeks after giving birth. But if your symptoms last longer or start later, you could have what is called postnatal depression. Now, postnatal depression is a common problem affecting more than one in every 10 women within a year of giving birth. It can also affect fathers and partners. So, Rita and Hazel, have you ever felt anxious up to the point where you feel depressed after giving birth? Um, I'm not quite sure if I was depressed, but I remember going th through a difficult period mm -hmm. um, after delivery, both for my first and second um, child. Um, that, that difficulty basically came from a sense of being so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. like, um, like with my first um, child, my husband and I had just been living with each other for a few years before mm -hmm. he came and all of a sudden there is a child who mm -hmm. now needed a lot of attention, needed a lot of care and we had to adjust to him. Mm -hmm. And so we were also wondering, will, uh, will we be able to manage going mm -hmm. to work and res uh, resuming normal life? Mm -hmm. And when my second child was born, I was like, Oh, now there are two children. <laughs> will I be able to manage? Will, will, will we be able to manage? Mm -hmm. um, and I think the concern also, not just the time and energy, but financial concern as well. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, let's say, a dark period of uncertainty mm -hmm. and feeling so worried about life. Now, how long was the period that you call dark period? that you went through? Yeah, probably, I think not more than a month for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. um, it may be a week or two, I'm not quite sure. And I think once I realized that I was dwelling in all my problems, mm -hmm. I was reminded, okay, I need to focus my attention on God, you know? Mm -hmm. um, remember, it's God's ideas to procreate and mm -hmm. God will provide. Mm -hmm. And so focusing my attention on the mountain mover rather than on the mountain, mm -hmm. really helped me to get out of that dark period. Mm -hmm. So Praise just, God. Yeah, just focusing on God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because many times women, they dwell on the mountains right, true. instead of mountain movers, right. our creator and our mm -hmm. savior and provider. Mm -hmm. um, and they fall into the trap mm -hmm. of what we call depression. Yes, right. True. Yeah, and the result can be very saddening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, for yes. most women. Right. So I'm really glad that you recovered very fast, yes. in spite of many what ifs, mm -hmm. uncertainty, mm -hmm. especially you and your husbands. Uh, you and your husband uh, are the only two that right. is raising your mm -hmm. child and mm -hmm. your children, right? Both right. of your children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we were away from home, mm -hmm. the first child was born in Singapore mm -hmm. and the second child in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And so there were no immediate 
family members to help. But yeah. I see. Yeah. Wow. So praise God. Amen. You were able to find that peace. Right. With, with His grace. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Hazel? Well, I would say um, I went through a pretty rough patch mm -hmm. after birth. Mm -hmm. um, See, uh, my s we I did not have a nanny. Mm -hmm. I did not have anyone to help me with my son. Mm -hmm. um, right after birth, of course, my parents. But then af after maternity leave was mm -hmm. over, mm -hmm. um, reality, we had to go back to work. Mm -hmm. And reality hit in. Um, I can't take my son with me. Mm -hmm. My son needs to stay at home. Mm -hmm. I don't have a nanny. Mm -hmm. um, and along the way, we were thinking, um, should, we have, should we have someone to live with us? Um, but because our family is very close, mm -hmm. and um, the thought of having someone else care for a young child mm -hmm. was something we were kind of afraid of. Mm -hmm. So my parents stepped in. Mm -hmm. um, my mom took some time off and she was uh, able to raise my son for mm -hmm. me. And that was a true blessing. But it hit me badly mm -hmm. because I had to go back to work. Mm -hmm. There was this long period of separation. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be able to see our son for the whole week. Mm -hmm. And it was really bad on my side. Mm -hmm. um, I would cry for no good reason. I would mm -hmm. just cry. I would cry for hours and hours and my husband wouldn't know what to do. And um, there were times that I just wouldn't want to eat. Mm -hmm. I would just um, stare into space. And um, my husband noticed something different. Mm -hmm. um, so he encouraged, he encouraged me. Sometimes we would um, just uh, tell ourselves, tell each other, this is the time that we can spend together. This is the time that we can spend together with the Lord, mm -hmm. even though our son is not with mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And so we did that, but along the way, things um, did not um, improve as as fast as I thought it would. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, I didn't even know this was possible depression. Mm -hmm. It was years later when I came across um, some articles that I had read. Then I realized, wait a second. I had depression and mm. I didn't know it. Mm. And um, uh, some of the things that made me realize it was depression was because of the thoughts that I had. Uh -huh. I had some really ugly thoughts. Would you be willing to share those thoughts? Perhaps, you know, many women out there could relate mm. if they're going through similar right. uh, mm -hmm. yes. depression uh, symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of the thoughts that came to my mind were thoughts of um, just ending my life. Mm -hmm. Why should I live? I had a son and he's not with me. Mm -hmm. What's the point of being a mom if mm -hmm. I can't be his mother? Mm -hmm. So That must be very hard. It, it right? was. It was mm -hmm. really hard. And mm -hmm. only through Christ mm -hmm. I was able to overcome. Mm -hmm. yeah. So every time I would fall, um, I would cry. I had all these thoughts. I was ready to, you know, um, jump. These are some of the things because I lived in a condo, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was tough. It was really now, tough. Now, what brought you out of that valley of depression? How did you turn around uh, once you realized that you were on a journey of depression? Uh, how did you uh, get up? You, and come out. You know, I had, um, I have good friends, mm -hmm. and um, I have a, a good su support system. Mm -hmm. um, my husband, my family, my sisters, um, and some of my friends encouraged me, mm -hmm. saying that you know, um, this works for you. Um, you can go through this. Um, I had some, some of my, the parents of my students, mm -hmm. they would tell me stories of themselves, how they had to go back to the city and work. And they told me, there was one parent I remember, told me both of her children, she had to send um, her children 
to another part of the country where her parents lived mm -hmm. and she told me it's okay you're doing this for your children you're doing mm -hmm. this for your son so um, what you're feeling right now is something that will come will come to a pass mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, I eventually got through because I, I um, spent a lot of time um, talking about my emotions mm -hmm. and um, I had friends who listened to mm -hmm. me and they gave me um, sound advice mm -hmm. and I have a husband who was very supportive he would take all my cries and he would take all my all my um, bad behavior mm -hmm. um, and he would bring me um, to the Lord and we would pray and ask for strength um, mm. and yeah. I, I decided to keep myself busy you know and I thought this would work if I keep myself busy so I did mm -hmm. and later on I started improving mm. that's mm. very good news yeah um, and I'm sure this would be a lot of uh, encouragement Mm. for many women out there who may have yes. or share similar experience yes. that you or Rita mm -hmm. went through. But you know, it is very important to pray and keep mm -hmm. praying. Mm -hmm. You know, the Holy Spirit speaks to us yes. and we must be willing to listen mm -hmm. because just like Mrs. Rita mentioned, God wouldn't um, uh, give us this blessing mm -hmm. if it wasn't his blessing to give yes. and he the will take care of life. us mm -hmm. he will guide us and only through Christ I was able to yes be free so it is important to fix our eyes mm. on Jesus yes. and That's go to true. him whenever we feel down or yes. feel anxious yes. or even up to the point where we feel depressed mm -hmm. yes um, and also I I find that sharing as women, yes. we talk about mm -hmm. what we feel inside out loud to people who, whom we trust That's and true. who cares and understand mm -hmm. is very important. That's true. So um, I think we women need that support system as well. Oh, yes. yes Someone who women. can listen to us uh -huh. and mm -hmm. who can pray with us yes. and who can relate and understand mm -hmm. us. Yes. Thank you very much. This is a, a very sensitive topic it is. on postnatal depression, but it is important mm -hmm. because many of us women, somehow or the other, in one way or the other, mm -hmm. we go through. Yes. Mm -hmm. Either it's a short-term anxiety mm -hmm. or a long-term anxiety mm -hmm. that leads to depression. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it is very important for us to realize mm -hmm. and accept yeah. that we are in that mm -hmm. and to turn around. Amen. Yes. Yeah. But if situation get worse, I believe that we should also seek medical advice mm. Mm. Yes. as well. Yes. Yeah, yes. to help us. Amen. Thank you very much for joining Mom to Mom program yeah. and thank you for sharing your experiences with us today. It has been a blessing and a joy mm -hmm. to know that we have a God who cares Amen. and yeah. listens and comforts us. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Our children are gifts from God. Remember to trust in God's plan and His will to lead and guide you through your pregnancy journey. Also, please don't forget that He is always with you as you walk this journey.
Being pregnant is a part of the process of doing what God wants us to do. Feel life inside me. The fruit of love. We did not know his gender yet. And so that morning before going to the hospital, we spoke to him and we said, are you ready to show us whether you're a boy or a girl? For some reason, I just decided to kind of um, check because something, something felt different in my body. And then when I looked, the color was green, which means positive. And I said, wow. <laughs> and I told my husband, this kid says, I am pregnant. Sometimes the baby hiccup in my in my tummy and it's go like whoop whoop. When the doctor um, used the ultrasound machine, right away she was able to identify it's a boy. So I think he heard us talking to him. The tummy becomes so big, you don't feel so much comfortable. However, I feel so really joyful and happy every time I feel the movement. An advantage is that the husband will give you foot massages every evening. When you sit in the couch like this, the tummy is so big until you can put the plate on the tummy and eat. They are nicer to you. Oh, she's pregnant. So people will stand up for you when you come into the room. People would like to give you more food and you could not eat much. I have to stop eating what I what I like to eat. I did not want to eat. Basically ate whatever I wanted to eat. I had headaches. The changes to the body. I felt big. Pressure also from the grandmother. Cravings. You have to do this, you have to eat this, you cannot eat that, you should do this. It just felt like I was ready to explode. People would like to take you around and you don't feel comfortable. Your legs start aching. You feel like you're not beautiful anymore. It wasn't what I thought it would be. I didn't expect it to be that bad. The best thing? Hmm. You have someone to love and to protect that is part of your flesh and blood. To be loved by my kids. This is someone that I am willing to basically give my life for. Being able to actually touch every part of that little child that was, you know, amazingly once inside you. So just meeting him for the very first time. The Bible says in John 16, 21, when a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Whether you're expecting your first or fifth child, Pregnancy can bring many memories and emotions, excitement, joy, fear, anxiety, anticipation, worry, and wonder. You can use the time while you are pregnant to draw closer to God as He grows a wonderful miracle inside you. God always has a purpose in the wait and pregnancy is the perfect time to grow spiritually as you grow a baby physically. We invite you now to visit our website at hopetv.asia. You'll find interesting materials to share with your friends and your loved ones. Also, send us your questions and comments on our Facebook page. We would love to hear from you. We would see you again next time to share experiences and discuss on issues that matter in the challenging but at the end rewarding experiences of being a mom.